There it is. All right. Elizabeth should be back. She she jumped out for a second. She should be back in. But I want to say uh, welcome, welcome. Um, I think we're gonna have some some others jump on here shortly. But nevertheless, you know me, I like to start on time. So here we be. Uh, God bless you tonight. I hope you all are fighting well. And I'm excited to be with you all tonight because if you can't tell by what you see going on in the world around you, the Lord Jesus is up to something. And whenever he's up to something, expect weird things to occur and let me be even more specific the word weird is just another word for supernatural so expect supernatural things in this time um we're going to pray, and then tonight we're going to go right into uh, something that I believe is, is going to be beneficial uh, for all of you here, and, uh, and I believe it will help us all on our journey as we walk deeper uh, with the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to pray, and we're going to jump right into things. Lord Jesus, thank you. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor for who you are to us. Lord, as we listen to your word tonight, Lord, may your word not enter just our heads. May it enter our hearts. Lord, we want to change. We want to see change. We want to be change. And we want to follow after you, no matter the cost. So may the word of the Lord enter our hearts tonight to equip us, to encourage us, to correct us, to exhort us, and bring us to a place that you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's jump right in. So, ah... Lance, there he is. So listen, to, tonight, uh, the, the title of the teaching tonight is Spirit-Led Heart. Say that one more time. Spirit-Led Heart. Now, obviously, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit leading your heart and how can we know if we are being led by the holy spirit so let's look at the the definition of like what does it mean to to be led first and foremost so to to be led means to guide to direct be in charge or to bring something about. I'm going to say that one more time. To be led means to guide, direct, be in charge, or to bring something about. This is going to be a night of self-reflection, guys. Some of the biggest changes, and, and some of you already know what I'm talking about because you've been through it in different capacities. The biggest changes in our lives happen when the Holy Spirit provokes us to look inward at our heart and to see how our heart is matching up with the heart of Jesus. So 
We're going to be reading some uh, some scriptures tonight. We're going to dive deeper into this thing. But for you all that are going to be uh, following along in your Bibles, we're going to be reading from 2 Corinthians 3, and we're going to be reading from 1 to 18. That's 2 Corinthians 3, and we will be reading from 1 to 18. Now, you know me, I always like to get people involved. So um, maybe we can split off some of these verses. It's it's 18 verses in total. My math is terrible, but I think if you divvy that up uh, between the, the people that we have here, there's three other or four people. Uh, my goodness, four divided by 18. Somebody help me out. Do, 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 do. Oh, thank goodness for a phone calculator. So about four, four and a half verses each um, should get us there. So if uh, if who would like to read the, the first four and a half verses? Okay, we got we got shalom. <laughs> I got it right. Go go ahead, shalom. You gotta unmute. Let me uh unmute you. There you go. You hear me? Okay. Yep. Are we beginning to condemn ourselves again, or do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letters of recommendation written on our hearts. To be known and ready by all. And you show that you are a letter from Christ. Delivered by us. Written not with ink. But with the spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone. But on tablets of human hearts. Such Ooh. is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Stop right there. So Paul is speaking to Corinth. And, and he's saying, are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter of recommendation written on our hearts. So notice, when the Holy Spirit is preparing you for the work. You may not have any sort of title or anything that comes behind your name that people can look at and be like, oh no, yeah, this person is, is meant for this. I want somebody to hear what I'm trying to say. When the spirit of the living God is preparing you. You know it's him. Because you will find yourself in places. Where you're like. There's nothing. That I bring to the table. That could have landed. Me here. All I have. Is what. He has placed. In my heart. So notice your recommend your 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 spiritual letter of recommendation is written on your heart. It's not written in something that men can see. It's on the inside of you. This is why when you see in different areas of scripture where the Lord is saying to people like Moses um, like people like Joseph, like, hey, I want you to do X, Y, and Z. You see Moses arguing with God. I, I can't, I, I don't have the qualifications for this. I, I can't do this. I don't even know how to speak. And you didn't see God being all sentimental with Moses either. In fact, God was angry. 
And he just got fed up. He just said, fine, I, I'll give you Aaron. But what God really wanted to do was God wanted Moses to suck it up and stop relying on himself. Because that's what Moses, that's what happens when we start talking about, oh, but I don't have this and this isn't in place and this and this. You're just, it's just, it's just pride. It is. It's just pride because you're looking to what you can see as a letter of recommendation. You're not looking to who the Holy Spirit has recommended. You're looking to the optics of how things should look like. I hope somebody is understanding what I'm saying. So then it says, uh, you yourselves are a letter of recommendation written on our hearts to be known and read by all. You show that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ towards God, there's a word, confidence, confidence. Now, spiritual things are very difficult for us to grasp because it's so easy to misinterpret what we see. When somebody who has no letters behind their name and nothing that you can see that shows that they're qualified for the assignment that you see them walking in, yet they're walking in it, and you're looking at them and you're like, ah, how are they walking in this? Where did this person come from? How are mm -hmm. they confident yet there's nothing in the natural that you can see that should make it make sense that their confidence just know the word of god entered them i'll give it an example there and and lance i was uh, listening to a voice note from him today there's many things that that lance has spoken mr c in in the church no evidence. He just he just knows the voice of God when God is speaking to him. No evidence yet of, of what he's saying. And sometimes he'll even forget what he said. And then time will go by. Years will go by. And these things will come to pass. When you're walking with the Lord Jesus... And he gives you revelation. Here's another word. Trust. Trust. We have to learn this in our walk with the Lord. Because you can speak about Jesus. You can worship the Lord Jesus. But do you trust him? When an instruction comes to you from him that is very uncomfortable or makes absolutely no sense at all, and you and you have confirmation, you know, no, no, I I know I heard from him. Are you willing to trust, not based on what you see? but based on what he's put in your heart. Remember, we're talking about a spirit-led heart. You read the four and a half there, uh, Shalom? If not, keep going. I, I only read four. Um, you want me to read five? Sure, sure, go ahead. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, 
but our sufficiency is from God. Our sufficiency is from God. Keep going. Who has made us sufficient to be ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Right. Stop right there. Stop right there. Now, I'm going to share this because... This may be relevant to some of you, uh, whether it be past or, or or present. And and I'm and and this may sound heretical, but I I promise you, I'm not trying to be. I'm just telling you the truth. When you read the Bible, hear me. When you read the Bible at face value, at face value, meaning you're just reading what you, you see. We're not talking about seeking the author of the book, which is the Holy Spirit. We're just talking about reading the book. Ask yourself this question. How come there's, there's so many people that have read the Bible and they still don't have the revelation of Jesus? How many people do you know who have read the Bible and manipulated it for their own gain? How many people do you know have read the Bible and used it to create some sort of a cult that they put the name tag of a, a certain denomination, I'm not going to say names, and, and called it a, a Jesus movement, but really it was a cult. How many, how many, how many examples do we know of this? It means that there's something more than just the text that we should be paying attention to because to just simply read the text but having no revelation of the God beyond the text there's a verse in scripture that uh, where Jesus is is speaking I believe he's speaking to the Pharisees and he says you're you're looking in the scriptures thinking in them you will find life but they only point to me so beyond the book is the revelation. The book is simply a gateway. It's our gateway to the God in and beyond the book. I hope somebody's understanding what I'm saying. So, and it says that the letter the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Wait a second. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. If you can't hear the voice, not with your physical ears, I'm saying. I'm saying if you can't sense the voice of God with your spiritual ears, just you, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be very difficult to discern God correctly when you approach that book. Again, I'm not trying to send sound heretical i'm just being honest with you 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 need you need to be okay and and i've spoken with uh with pastor glow about this you need to be okay to to just be silent and and listen and understand the voice of the king of kings and the lord of lords in 
your life. You can know all the scriptures in the world. But if nothing has entered your heart, what does it all mean? Are we studying just to know? Or has the word entered us? Because when the word enters us, we begin to change. We begin to grow. We begin to transform. Now, I'm just going to ask you to put this in the chat. How many of you here that the Holy Spirit has asked you to do something that has made you feel very uncomfortable? Be honest. Put it in the chat. Just say yes if that's you. The Holy Spirit, I'm going to put yes in the chat myself because he, he's definitely asked me to do some things, more than a few things, that were, were very uncomfortable. You get, you get through doing one thing, and you're like, oh, my goodness, I survived that one. And then he asks you of something else, and you're like, ah, really? Ah, God, I just did this one thing, man. Come on, cut me some slack. He's like, ah, no, man, it's, it's pruning season. Pruning season, you know, and and ah, it's just like it's like you you feel like it's a never ending thing. You get through one thing and it's like oh, okay, I'm good, and then he he prunes you right back again. But what is what is the purpose of pruning? To bear more fruit. Don't look at it as. You're, you're done, you're condemned. God is just trying to bear as much fruit out of you as he possibly can. You are his investment. And the Lord Jesus wants a return. I was listening to, to something the other day. There was, um, I don't know, I don't know if this name is controversial or, or not. Um, there's a woman by the name of Catherine Kuhlman and uh, used by the Lord, crazy miracles and things of that nature. And uh, one day she went genuinely before God and, and said, like, you know, why me? Why? Why have you used me? There's nothing special about me. There's nothing about me that I can look to to say, why did you use me? And the answer she received shocked her. The Lord responded to her and said, well, I went to four other men before you and they weren't willing to submit in the areas I wanted them to submit to. So I moved on from them and I moved to you. You were just willing to submit. So therefore, I knew I could get the best return on my investment with you. Let that sink in for a second. The spirit-led life is a submitted life. I'll say that one more time. A spirit-led life is a submitted life. At some point, guys, you get to the point where ah, you may be teaching, preaching, or doing something, and you're talking, you're coming before people, and unbeknownst to everybody you've come before in the background, you're dealing with the exact same issue that you're teaching on. You may not, you yourself who's bringing the word may not have even received breakthrough in an area that you are teaching, but because you know that this is what the Lord Jesus is asking of you to do, you do it faithfully. I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody. So, uh, Shalom, where did you leave off? And we'll we'll hand it off. But where did you leave off? Um, whoever reads next is starting with verse seven. Okay, Jay, can I have you read from verse seven? Uh, yes, sir. I got you. Okay. <clears throat> Now, if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, came with glory so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of his glory, 
fading though it was, will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? If the ministry that condemns men is glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? Stop right there. So there's a ministry of condemnation. <laughs> there's a ministry of condemnation. Some of you guys have experienced it. Let me let me put it plainly to you. It is almost impossible, if not completely impossible, to walk in the spirit in an area of your life where there is condemnation. Let me, let me say it a different way. Living a spirit-led life Walking in that, walking in submission to whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do with you, it means you come to a place where you've been delivered from condemnation. Why? Because the Lord Jesus says, I've used the foolish things of this world, and I'm paraphrasing, to reveal myself. It means if you're being spirit-led, you're not afraid to look foolish. There's a ministry of condemnation, guys. And if you want to walk free of that, if you truly want to be free from condemnation in your life, you need to be willing to put all of your eggs in God's basket. When he asks something of you and you've been putting it off and you've been put, maybe some of you it's been decades, you've actually forgotten about what he had asked you to do. Uh, 10 years go by and you're wondering why nothing's moving. Why is nothing? Why the stagnation? I've been praying for the same thing for 10 years. What is going on? And the enemy works that way, you know. The enemy will make it so we forget what the instructions were. I always encourage people to write things down. When the Lord is speaking to you, you know the Holy Spirit speaking to you, write it down. Don't think for one second the enemy's not going to try and come in and cloud your mind. Some of you have forgotten and you think it's just natural. Mm. The Holy Spirit himself has to bring it back to your mind because the enemy already swooped in and said, ah, they weren't diligent with the word. They didn't write it down. They didn't meditate on it. They didn't seek God about it. I'm coming in. I'm wiping it from their memory. The Holy Spirit is the only one now who can bring it back up. I hope I'm speaking to somebody. Keep going, Jay. <clears throat> For what was glorious has no glory now in comparison with the surpassing glory. And if what was fading away came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? Mm. Should I continue? Keep going. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. Their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the Old Covenant is read. It has not been removed, because only in Christ it has taken away. It is it taken away. Stop right there says, since we have such a hope, we are very 
bold. So here's 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 the here's a spiritual truth. When you're being led by the spirit, it is no longer about you. I'm going to say that one more time. When you're being led by the spirit, it's no longer about you. It's about how much glory can Jesus get from my life? How much fame can Jesus get from my existence? How much boldness can I walk into this boxing ring of life with because I know that the fight is already fixed. This is where we need to get out of carnal thinking. We'll see somebody who is bold in the Lord Jesus and we'll look from afar and we will see it as arrogance. I'm not saying that there aren't bold people that aren't arrogant. But you, these, you who are on the call here, don't write off when you see somebody walking in a boldness. Because you don't know the heart. God sees the heart. And when you only begin to care about your heart posture, now another thing happens. You let go of your reputation. I'm going to say that one more time. Once you let go of what things look like, you only care about the work that the Lord is doing in your heart. You will completely let go of your reputation. It's no longer about optics. It's no longer about fitting in. It's no longer about status quo. It's about how much glory can Jesus get from my life while I walk the planted earth. Is somebody hearing me? Another thing, when you're, when you begin to be intentional about being spirit led the veil from your your eyes will begin to be removed be prepared to see things much differently than how you saw them before my friends that is called growth that is called maturing in the spirit. You're supposed to change. You're supposed to see things differently as you grow in the spirit. Where you are this year, as you grow in the spirit, will not be where you are next year. Why? Because you are intentional about growing in the spirit. Let me show you something very quickly. Some of you, you're praying for breakthrough. Some of you have been in, in a similar place for decades. Yet a day is like a thousand years to God and, and, and a thousand years is like a day. Did you know that the acceleration on a person's life, when they are spirit-led, is 
limitless. Meaning there's actually no ceiling once you decide to take this thing seriously. There are some people who are spirit-led who have already lived the lives of two people and they're only in their 40s. Why? They allowed the spirit of the living God to take them where he wanted to take them, to do with them what he wanted to do with them. They've already lived the lives of two people. In fact, in the natural, it's impossible for you to have completed the amount that this one person has completed without supernatural help. Why do you think so many have sold their souls to demons? Why do you think you see some of these concerts and demonic portals are opening up? Demons are coming out into the crowds and people begin to manifest. There was an altar. There was a sacrifice that these people made to accelerate where they wanted to go. Unbeknownst to them, where Satan wanted to take them. We see these people doing this in the world, yet we're sitting at home afraid, seeing what's happening in the world and saying, Jesus, just come now and, and let this thing be done. Yet he still has work for you to do. Spirit-led life. Um, Jay, where did you stop at? Um, I finished at I have sixteen. Yes, no. Was it sixteen? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't recall. I believe it was sixteen, though. Okay. okay. No, I'm sorry. I left off on, it appears to be 14. 14, okay. No, that's what Okay, okay. Um, Elizabeth, are you okay to read from 14 on? I don't know which book they're reading. I got in late. Oh, okay. Um. Uh, Seth, can you read from 14 on? We're, yeah, I don't want to read from 14 on, but I got late. I got here late, so let me know the scripture. I'm pulling it up now. Oh, as you tell me, I'll pull it up now. Okay, it's it's Second Corinthians. Okay. 3. 14. 14, yes. To what, to what verse? Uh, we're reading to 18. Uh, to 18. Okay, let me find 14. Okay, but I'm reading from the CSB version. All good. Uh, Second Corinthians 3, uh, 14. But their minds were hardened, for to this day, at the reading of the Old Covenant, the same veil remains. It is not lifted, because it is set aside only in Christ. Yet, still today, whenever Moses, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We all with unveiled faces are looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord and are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. This is from the Lord who is the spirit. Seth, you got to read that one more time. I was getting excited just listening to you. <laughs> all right, let me read it back. That's a powerful one. Sheesh. All right. But their minds were hardened, for to this day, at the reading of the Old Covenant, the same veil remains. It is not lifted, because it is set aside only in Christ. Yet still today, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. 
we all with unveiled faces are looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord and are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. This is from the Lord, who is the spirit. You want to get out of the matrix? <laughs> you you, you want to get out of the patterns of this world? You 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 want to get out of the 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 mundane everyday stuff that you see? Start saying yes to the Holy Spirit. I'm serious. Start saying yes. That little whisper you've heard, you think it's your own voice. Yet God says in his word, he tests the mind and searches the heart. How do you think he tests the mind? He sends you a thought. But most Christians are just like, ah, oh, was that just me or... Guys, come on. The, the world is more spiritual than we think. When a thought comes to you and you're like, where did that thought come from? There was nothing I was just thinking about that just made would have made me think about this. How do you think the devil whispers in our ears? It's just the perversion of what God has done from the beginning. Some of you are asking the question, how do I even hear the voice? You heard the voice today. You just didn't recognize it. It was your thoughts. He used your thoughts to speak to you. You thought, ah, oh, why did this person come to my mind? Not knowing there's an instruction there for you to pray or even to check in on that person. They've come to your, your mind two and three times. The Lord's asking you, pray for this person. You may not know what they're going through, but I know that's why I'm bringing them to, to your mind. I'm hoping we have an intercessor here that can intercede in prayer. I hope I'm speaking to somebody. There are cues that the Holy Spirit gives. We need to learn the cues of the Holy Spirit. We're not going to leave this teaching tonight until we learn some of the cues of the Holy Spirit. This will help you on your journey to being spirit-led. It's not as complex as you think. It's really not. Let me give you an example. Symbolism. Symbolism. God will use symbolism as a way to send a message to us. Let me give you an example. You may be out going for, for walks. Does anybody here go for a run or go for walks or something like that? Yeah, you 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 get out, you you go for a run, you go for a walk. So you're 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 probably running in in one of two things, like a, a town, a city, or like nature, right? You're 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 out and you're seeing all of this stuff around you. Now, the Lord Jesus sometimes he will use what you see as symbolism of of what he's actually trying to speak to you. Let me give you an example. There's a, a woman I know, she's, I think she's 80 now, and she is married to a, a man named George. Now, she had come from a very abusive relationship, and when she met George, she had never met a man like him before. She thought, ah, this is too good to be true. So she prayed and asked the Lord, listen, I want to know from you, should I marry this man or not? Now notice, she had sense enough to, to bring God into the equation. Some of you are making decisions that you never consulted God on, and then you went off and made the wrong decision. Yet God was waiting there, waiting for you to invite him in to the negotiation. 
he could have got you a better deal. So listen to this. So now she says, I, I need to know from you, is this the man I am meant to marry? She's driving on the street with her friend. She's in the car. Next thing she knows, she comes to a stoplight. A big transport truck pulls up right beside her car. Guess what the logo says? George in big letters all across the truck. The Lord will use things just as simple as that to get our attention, to confirm his word to us. She had a sense, this is good, but it seems too good to be true. Lord, is this you? She's now happily married. And every time I sit and have coffee with her, she says, Josh, I don't know how I, I was so blessed. He's the, he's the best thing God ever gave to me. That's one example. Let's go, let's go to another example. And I've said this one before, your thoughts. No, no, not the same. Uh, Cheyenne's asking, is it the same abusive hus husband? No, no. She came out of an abusive relationship and then met this other guy named George. And he's a good man. She ended up marrying him uh, to clarify that. Now, your thoughts. Your thoughts. So the Holy Spirit will also do it this way. This And this is why it's important to, to get quiet. There's a lot of distractions and things. And listen, I'm speaking to you things the Lord has spoken to me specifically. Sometimes we need to take the earbuds out and be okay to just walk in silence. I know that may be uncomfortable for some of you. But listen, the Lord will use this to your benefit. You'll be walking along. I'm still speaking to the people that get out and get exercise. Maybe I'm saying something to you subliminally. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you may be out getting exercise and you're walking. And all of a sudden a thought comes to you. And it could be an idea. And you're like, oh, where did that come from? Listen, if it's something that you sense, ah, where did that come from? And it's something that you believe did not come from a, a negative place or a demonic place, write it down. How many thoughts a day do we have that came from God? We don't have the sense to write down the thought. We forget it altogether. There was a message in there that was to our benefit. We need to begin to look at our lives spiritually just as much as naturally, because God is using natural things to convey spiritual messages to us. I'm going to say that one more time. God will use natural things to convey spiritual messages that we are meant to pick up. Let me give uh, another example. Dreams. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll share a dream that I had, and I saw this dream uh, manifest right before my eyes. And um, uh, I hope it's okay if I, if I share this, uh, Lance. But when uh, before the transition happened, I had a dream, and Lance was in the dream. And I just remember seeing a plane falling from the sky. And Lance was there and I was there and we just watched this thing fall. And I just remembered this, this feeling of like, wow, what, what is happening here? Now the day, and some of you were there, the day that we had the meeting in the church and Lance let everybody know, let all the leadership know, hey, listen, we're transitioning. I'm stepping down. This is what's going to happen. And I remember him saying, guys, this hurts. This hurts. And as he was saying those words, because in the dream, Lance was injured. And I had this dream like two, three weeks to a month before this, this event happened. He says, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. As he kept saying that over again, I realized the dream I saw was manifesting right in front of my eyes. The Lord was giving me a message ahead of time. 
letting me know what was about to happen, even though I didn't know exactly what was coming. Symbolism. So these are a few ways that we must be aware of in recognizing how the Lord may speak. In the spirit, it is simple, but in carnality, it can be very complex to catch on. Now, Seth was reading something there that was very powerful. He said, Moses, uh, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Wait a second. When one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. So wait a second. You have all these people following God, following the, the letter of Moses. They're following the letter. And they haven't turned yet to the Lord. So you can be, you can be following religion and not have turned to the Lord yet. You can claim to be a Christian and have not yet turned to the Lord. Some people, they gave their lives to their denomination. They did not give their lives to Jesus. Some people gave their lives to their denomination. They did not give their lives to Jesus. says, when they turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. How many people do you know that believe on the Lord Jesus? You look at their life and you're like, ah, that person is walking in freedom. I'm not talking about their circumstances. I'm not talking about their situation. I'm not talking about anything that you see naturally. Spiritually, this is something you pick up. They are walking in freedom. They are walking in liberty. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is spirit. So I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to ask a question. How much glory do you want to experience while you're still here? It says we are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is spirit. I'm going to say something, and it's absolutely the truth. There are a handful of people who walk in the spirit. There are a handful of people who walk in the spirit of the living God. There's not too many. There's not too many. There's not too many. This is why people can read the Bible and read the story about all the people that Jesus delivered, yet they see somebody they know doing deliverance, and all of a sudden they're skeptical. They're like, ah, I don't think that's real. I'm they're reading the same Bible you're reading, 
yet they're questioning what the Bible says. They say they believe it. But when it shows up physically, they can't understand it. They deny it. I think there's something in scripture that speaks to that. It's like, uh, what, I think it was Paul who said, they, 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 they talk about God, but they deny the power. I'm paraphrasing. They deny the power thereof. This is a night of self-reflection. This is not condemnation. This is not a slap on the wrist. This is an opportunity to say yes. Some of you will be in one year, you'll be where you would have been it would have taken you 10 years to get. And all you have to do is say yes. All you have to do. I'm going to say this, and, and some religious people may not like this, but it's the truth. Stop reading your Bible trying to escape the word the Lord gave you that you're uncomfortable with. Stop trying to use the Bible to get out of the instruction. Some of you will hear the word from the Lord and you're like, I don't like what I heard. Let me look. For, you're not looking for, for scripture to understand. You're looking for scripture to get out of it. God already sees your heart. You're looking for scripture to get out of what you heard, not to understand what you heard. I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody. I'm trying to break the spirit of religion off of you. Because you can read the word and miss the Holy Spirit. You truly can. You truly can. It's, it's an intimate walk. It's an intimate walk. And guess what? We're not always going to get it right. But I hope if when you leave this teaching, you understand a very important truth. It's not about getting it right. It's about submission. Allow him to guide you Allow him to correct you. Allow him to take you to where he wants you to be. God doesn't deal with us like we deal with other people. Thank God for that. I'm not saying that God hasn't taken people out. He certainly has taken people out. Read your Bible. There was a man who spilled his seed. I think they, they would call that, that uh, masturbation today or, 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 or pulling out. God killed him. He said, why are you wasting your seed? That's not what I told you to do. Clock the man, done. It's in your Bible. So in finishing, in finishing, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. May the word enter your heart. May the word enter your heart. Lord, open up our hearts to receive you know what humility before the Lord looks like
you've lost the ability to tell the Holy Spirit no. May the word enter your hearts today. I'm gonna pray and we're gonna we're gonna close things down. Thank you, Jesus. That you give us opportunity after opportunity to say yes. Lord, let us not delay. Let us not delay. Forgive us for the times we ignored what you've asked us to do. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord. And by your spirit, O oh God, lead us, direct us, bring about the change that you want to see in our hearts so that your glory can be seen through our lives and that we ourselves can be transformed from one degree of glory to the next degree of glory. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've received from the Holy Spirit tonight, I pray that you will begin to write down what he is speaking to you in the days to come, that you will begin to execute on the things that he has spoken to you. We are in a war. We are on a full on attack. And the Lord is looking for those willing to enlist. I want you to realize when you say yes, it means you choose to enlist. Because there are civilian Christians and there are enlisted Christians. I want you to understand that. There are civilian Christians and there are enlisted Christians. Choose to enlist today. We'll see you guys in two weeks. God bless you. All my love to you guys. And we will see you at the next study. Enjoy yourselves. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. God bless you. Good night. Good night. God bless and good night. Good night. God bless everyone. Amen. God bless. Good night, y'all.